Well, hello there, and welcome to episode 16 of the podcast, Jump Into Success. Okay, let's get going. Alrighty, 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 here we are, episode 16, and uh, welcome to the podcast. If this is your first time tuning into one of our episodes, you're very welcome, and be sure to subscribe, um, as we're going to be covering lots of interesting uh, things, all personal development focused in the coming weeks and months ahead, with some great people lined up for, for interviews as well. So no interview today, it's just myself, um, and I was wondering what we would be discussing today, and I was watching something on the BBC, actually, around three great t- thinkers of, of the ancient world and their philosophical contribution to the modern world. And I thought, well, that's interesting, because uh, one of the things I often talk about, and in fact, I was uh, talking a little bit about it this past weekend, on the the start of our NLP practitioner and coach certification program uh, because I'm a great one for encouraging our students and indeed my coaching clients to do just that to develop their own philosophy and I kind of term it you know a personal philosophy for success and I guess for centuries philosophers thought leaders and educators kind of explore the questions that shape our experience you who are we where are we going what's important But one of those key things, uh, and I think sometimes it gets forgotten in the modern world, is, you know, asking yourself those kind of questions. What do I really believe about myself and the option of a better tomorrow? And uh, I guess it just is that underpinning idea. You know, what do I really believe? And I think it's uh, Socrates said the the unexamined life is not worth living. Uh, Not that we want to become, you know too inward and, you know, self-analysis or become obsessed by that idea. But, you know, I think a little bit of stopping and starting to reflect on where we're going, what's important to us, what do we really want out of life, what contribution are we bringing to the table, uh, is is probably going to add a lot of value to to our experience. So in this episode, I I thought I would just touch on the, the thing that I talk about a lot in our training programs is this notion, <clears throat> excuse me, of developing a personal philosophy uh, for success. So I guess the starting point here is, you know, you, you ask some questions of yourself. Who are you? And I think it is, or who am I, if you're asking yourself, who am I really? And I think it was on the, the temple of Apollo back in the ancient world. The, there was the inscription over the temple, know thyself and you shall be free. And there's something about understanding who we are, having that sense of awareness of what's important to us, where we want to go in life, that really does kind of empower you in a certain way. So, you know, understanding yourself really, we would say, is the cornerstone of uh, probably of all personal development, really beginning to know who you are and developing the self in ways that you feel uh, are important. Then other sort of questions that come up in sort of, 101 I suppose philosophy is how do I live a good life or what's the real meaning of success or how can I truly create a fulfilling or maybe even happy life these are the kind of questions that you might want to to consider if you are thinking right I'm going to really think about developing my personal philosophy for success so what does success even mean it's uh, you know in NLP we would say success is a nominalization it's not something you can pick up and put in a wheelbarrow like you can a shovel or, I don't know, any other thing that exists in the real world. <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, well, excuse me coughing all the time. It's just this cough that I've had for weeks now. Kind of a cold. Every time I think it goes away, it creeps on back. So do excuse my, my coughing. Um, so yeah, so success is a normalization. So it means different things to, to different people. So I guess I would encourage you to think, what does success really mean to you? If you, are you successful now? How do you measure it? If you wanted to be more successful in the future, how would you measure that? And indeed, in that measurement, what would that do for you specifically? 
And is is that success tied to having a more fulfilling and a happy life? Uh, only you would know the answer to these kind of things, but we would encourage you, I suppose, to, to think about those. Now, one of the things I think are really, really useful, or one of the sort of uh, ideas and conceptual sort of notions that I think are a useful idea when, when thinking about setting yourself the task of developing a personal philosophy for success is using the presuppositions uh, of NLP. So those of you who don't know, NLP's got the set of statements, or I guess really they're more like, you know, uh, you might call beliefs that you might want to take on that can be very, very useful when thinking about developing a personal belief system or a philosophy for success. So I'm just going to pick out a few as an example of what I'm talking about. So let's start off with one that really helped me change my life. And that is that there is no such thing as failure. There is only feedback. There's no such thing as failure. There is only feedback. Now, when you first hear that, you think, well, hang on a second. Of course there's failure. But so <clears throat> we're not saying that things don't go wrong and don't work out as planned. Of course they're going to. That's called life. However, what we're really talking about is our attitude towards it. Do we go, oh, it's happened again. I knew this would go wrong. I'm a failure and start beating ourselves up. Or have we got the growth mindset? Are we developing the growth mindset that says, OK, things didn't work out as perhaps planned. But what, what are we learning from this? What's the feedback that says, yes, let's change our strategy. Let's change our approach and, and take the next step forward towards our overall goal. And it may sound fundamentally, I guess, kind of a bit ABC, but actually it's profound. And I remember when I really got it, that all of the things in life that I thought, fail, 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 I didn't do good at that, it could have been better at that. And, and I took them on as failures, which kind of has an emotional, kind of an emotional sort of punch really in it. Whereas its feedback is a learning thing. And, and it is very, very different. Now, the next one, <clears throat> that I want to, to highlight is if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always had. Now, this is attributed to um, the great American writer whose name's completely gone out of my head right now. It'll come to me in a second. But actually, again, it sounds ironic. If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always had. But it, it is super powerful. And in fact, it interests me sometimes that, you know, corporate clients say, oh, we need you to come in and do some coaching or some consultancy work for us. And I say, well, so what are the problems? What's, what's going on here? What is, you need to change and develop? And then I'll ask, what have you done? And it's clear from their response, they're still doing the same things that may even be causing the problem. So they're not looking at the underlying symptoms. So if you really want to make a change in your life, you're going to have to do something different. And of course, in NLP, we, th you know, we say thinking is the biggest part of the doing. So you have to change your thinking, your attitude, your whole approach to, to life or a particular situation, because that's the only way you're going to get a different result. And I think it was Einstein that said that, you know, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result is kind of a definition uh, of, of insanity. So if you always do what you've always done, you probably will always get the same result. So if you want something different in your life, then you're going to need to do something different. And in that, we also include thinking and how you approach life. Uh, one other one that I would add in here is uh, if you want to understand act or the understanding is in the doing. And you know, people often say, well, I read that self a help book or I read that personal development book or I've been on that course and nothing really happened. I said, well, hold on, hold on a second. What did you do? In what way did you apply the principles, the ideas, the concepts? And as they sort of, you know, respond, you can kind of see, yeah, you read the book, you went on the course, but you didn't make any actual changes. You didn't apply the models, the theories, the concepts, the changes that are required, thinking about the other two uh, NLP principles that I've you know mentioned, no failure, only feedback. And if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always had. So the understanding and the change will be in the doing. You've got to do something different. Do it. Get out there and start doing something different. 
So they're just three. I mean, obviously, there's a lot more. Like the, another big one would be the map is not the territory. You know, the map is not the territory. We don't really know what the world is. We kind of create a model of the world based on our experience. You know, what we see, hear, and feel, our upbringing, our cultural background, and sometimes that can, you know, that sort of pre-cognitive conditioning in belief systems that can imprison us or so-called limiting beliefs. So. You know, the map is not the territory and there is an opportunity to change. Well, I don't know if I can change, Tony. Well, what's really stopping you? Who says you can't change? Where did you get that belief from? It's not very helpful. Perhaps develop a can-do. You know, success comes in cans, as uh, one motivational speaker uh, has said many, many times. Then another thing about developing a philosophy for, for, for success is to be outcome oriented or solution oriented. And that brings us on to the idea of always having something you're working towards and the benefits of setting motivating goals or motivating outcomes. So not just setting a goal, oh, I'm going to do this thing, but it's motivating. I really want to do it. There's something in me that's driving me. I want this. And I'm very clear about, you know, for what reason. You know, in coaching, we ask questions of our clients. So you want this particular goal or outcome for what reason? What will this do for you? And really what we're trying to figure out here is what's the goal beyond the goal? What do you really want out of this change process, out of this effort you're putting in to do something different? Now, the thing about setting goals is, A, they're motivating and they give us something to focus on. And also, they get us away from the TV. That's the first thing. They get us away from the computer screen, uh, out into the universe. Um, they give us clarity of purpose. Uh, I have something to really focus on. Um, motivation, commitment, you know, tell other people I'm going to do this. So you've got accountability partners. Uh, uh, th think about how am I going to use my time uh, rather than endlessly watching TV. Most of it is, is not very good, quite frankly, or spending endless time in social media, which is definitely not a good thing to do. You know, I'm going to focus on my goal and be clear about what you're doing it for. For what reason this outcome? This is going to benefit me, my family, my team, my business in very specific ways, which is why we'll say write them down, write your goals down and what they're going to do, do for you. And then another thing I think helps us around developing this notion of a personal philosophy for success is, you know, discounting the negative things in your past. So thinking that happened. So what have I learned from that? But not letting that past drag us down. I think it's Covey said, you know, live out of your imagination, not your history. Uh, because too many people live in their history and keep reliving and reliving the imagined, you know, sins and uh, injuries and personal slights that they've had uh, for, uh, in, in their lifetime, rather than letting it go and moving on and b developing uh, a better tomorrow. So how, how would we do that? So what, what are the sort of ways that we might think, OK, I'm going to experiment with this idea so the first thing is i would recommend 100 percent, and there's a lot of science behind that i think i've said this before is to start a journal the benefits of personal journal journaling cannot be uh, uh overemphasized it is one of the simplest most powerful personal development things you can do for yourself and quite frankly, it's the cheapest because all you need is a pen or a pencil and a, you know, a copybook, paper, or if you want to do it online, although I do think it's better just to write. I think that's more a reflective process. Um, I just think, you know, what happened this week? You know, maybe on a Sunday afternoon, take some time or a Saturday, whatever day is good for you, Friday, whatever day is good for you. But I think at least once a week, what's happened this week? Let me just take a moment and think, what happened? What was interesting? What challenges did I have? What key learnings did I really notice? Um, what did somebody say that really struck me as, wow, that's quite interesting? Or did I see something that made me think, crikey, that's really useful? Or that's thought provoking? Or what did I actually spend a lot of my time on? And what value did I get from that? Because that could start the edit process about taking things out that are not necessarily conducive to personal and professional growth. So it's it's all about writing down your thoughts, your feelings, experiences, and this self-reflection will give you this insight and self-awareness for yourself. The other thing, of course, it does is it, it helps you create 
a kind of a, a way of tracking your, your, your progress and your development in life because you begin to see patterns. And if you, you know, setting goals, which I've already said, you begin to see how you've done that and develop your strategies and almost kind of think, wow, I did set that goal and look, I did this, I did this, I did this, and it happened. And so, you know, that then encourages your self-belief, your self-confidence to take the next step forward. The other thing about journaling is it does help reduce stress because you get things out of your head and onto the paper. And it kind of helps you kind of, not to regulate your uh, emotional state, but kind of grounds you so that things don't seem as intense when actually they're not. Because too many people focus on the negative things when actually they should focus on what's really going on and a, the, you know, the thought of what am I going to do for a better tomorrow. And then the other thing that I always recommend if you're going to start this notion of developing a personal philosophy for success is to commit to lifelong learning. Lifelong learning is one of those things that keeps your brain alive, keeps your spirit bouncing, and you just kind of have a sense of I'm learning something new for me, for my career, for my personal development, for uh, my ability to become a better person so I can help my family out, my, my business, or whatever the, you know, the context that you're, you're thinking about. But the benefits of lifelong learning are well documented. And the easiest way to do that is through having a personal or a professional development program. So what's missing? What do I need to brush up on? What skills and ideas do I, w- would benefit me personally and indeed professionally? Uh, you know, the world is changing super, super fast. And so the, you know, the idea that you, you left college or uni however many years ago and you don't have to learn anything new is long gone. I mean, forget that idea. The world is changing and so you need to change and grow with it. Soft skills, in, well, so-called soft skills uh, in particular, are really, really key. Because the more you engage in that, the more you begin to really, A, get to know yourself, B, become a better and more useful person. As Jim Rohn says, the more skills you have, the more useful you are, the more uh, value you have uh, in the marketplace. But your whole well-being and cognitive health, your emotional, mental health, will always uh, be, be, be improved by this process. So really what I'm encouraging, I suppose, in, in this episode, which is a shorter one than normal as we don't have uh, a guest on, is to really consider, OK, what is my philosophy for success? What is my belief about myself, a better tomorrow, the idea of moving forward, continually growing and then adding more value to myself, my business, my team, my family, my community, etc. So there you go. I think, well, actually, I I will share this with you as well. I think back to, what, 27 years ago when I first did my very first NLP training. And one of the things that stood out to me uh, on that weekend, that very first weekend that I did, were the presuppositions of NLP. And it was, no failure, only feedback. And if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always had. Those two, two statements rang in my brain for for like days and I thought right I'm going to act as if I'm going to act as if they're true there is no such thing as failure anymore I'm just going to learn from things when they go wrong and I'm going to change I'm going to change how I think how I feel how I behave uh, some of the people I, I spend time with I'm going to make changes and my life turned around And so then that added to other kind of things that came in through NLP, through coaching, through leadership development, all of those other things that we've we've done over the years. And you develop a personal philosophy for success. And, uh, you know, a bit like written above the temple at Apollo, I've already mentioned, know thyself and you will be free. Uh, So that is my uh, my recommendation for, for this week. Develop your personal philosophy for success. And I wish you luck with that. Okay, that's what we've got for you this week. Guys, take care and we'll see what we will have for you next week. Be sure to subscribe and uh, I will catch you on the next podcast. Till then, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.